Uh, thank you, Chuck. Uh, you know, obviously, it's an ex exciting time for our program. Um, feel very, you know, fortunate uh, to have won uh, the West Side. You know, there are a lot of really good football teams, you know, in our division, in our, in our whole conference. Uh, but, you know, to come out of the West, we're really excited about that. I thought our kids responded really well uh, against, uh, against East Carolina. They got off to a lead on us, and our guys were able to battle back. And you know, finish you know with the with the big win, which we're excited about. Uh, but as big as the win is and was, uh, we're, we're pressing forward. You know, getting ready for SMU. Uh, Coach Morris has done a really good job there, and you can see the, the culture changing there. You know, they've you know they're they're close to you know one game away from being bowl eligible. Um, they've played a tough conference non-conference schedule. They you know and played a tough schedule and you know played everybody tough and so it's got to, it's going to be another challenge we we got to go to their place you know I'm sure they'll be excited like I said the opportunity to become bowl eligible and so you know we just got to make sure that you know hopefully we'll be ready to go Big questions for coach Dimatololo please star 1 on your telephone keypad we'll put you in the queue then the operator will introduce you The first question comes from Gene Wang at the Washington Post Hi, Ken. Good morning. Um, obviously, this for you guys an opportunity potentially to have home field in the AAC championship game. Where does that kind of fit in as far as motivation goes for this weekend? Well, it's huge. I mean, obviously, you always want to play at home. Uh, you know, our home field has been a great venue for us. A great home field. We have you know a lot of advantages at home with the mids, our fans, and so. You know what the the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium means to our program, so obviously we'd like to play at home, and so that's that's a big motivation factor for this week, uh, Gene. And also, Ken, something um, wanted to ask you after the game, but the senior class, this year's senior class, matched last year's for most wins over a four-year period. Given all the injuries this year, particularly on defense, where does accomplishment rank for you? And you know how kind of remarkable it is given the circumstances of this season. Well, it's the same thing. I keep shaking my head, just like you said, with all the injuries, um, you know, with all the seniors, great seniors that we had on our team last year and them graduating and, you know, not much respect given to our team this year with the, the sen this senior class. So, like I said, like I said all along, it's been, it was great motivation for our team and for our seniors to prove that, you know, we, last year was not a fluke. Uh, but really proud of them. You know, they've – you know, just go come to work every day. They work hard. They keep their mouth quiet, and just play ball. And you know, we're just really, really excited for them. And hopefully, we can continue to keep going. Thank you, Ken. <clears throat> the next question comes from John Altavia at the Hartford Current. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, John. Uh, as someone. Hey, as someone who uh, only sees your team from afar on television and whatnot, and I, I know you've probably addressed this many times with your own media, but just wondering if you if you think Will Wirt's performance this season, where he has gone, where he has taken the team, has it ex has it uh, gone past your own expectations for the young man? Oh, definitely. I mean, for you know, we I would hope that he would play well for us, uh, but he's doing things that. I mean, even Keenan, you know, he's on track to break a lot of Keenan's records for single season stuff, and so he's playing at an exceptional level right now. Um, you know, you'd always hope that your, your players would play good, but he's playing better than good. He's playing exceptional football, and he's playing at a high level. Uh, he's running hard. He's getting us in the right play. He's throwing in, you know, he's in the passing game. He's playing well, and so I just um, – He's doing a lot of a lot of good things right now, you know, and we're very fortunate for that. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. We'll go next to Ronnie Woodward at the Greenville Daily Reflector. Hey, Coach. Uh, I know you were you're probably pretty locked in on Saturday, you know, with your team, but I'm just wondering when Zay Jones got the record and they. They had a brief kind of moment stopping the game. Did did you soak that in at all a little bit, or you know, have some appreciation for it? Or what was kind of your viewpoint on on Zay Jones getting that record for ECU? Well, you know, I just obviously it's a huge, huge record. You know, what I mean, and so as a coach, 
you know, you you understand the magnitude of it. It's a great accomplishment for Zay, but I don't know how our players took to that. You know, what I mean, you got to ask them. But I think uh, you know, um, I don't know if anybody likes anybody celebrating when you're competing against them. So, uh, but for me, you know, I thought it was a great deal for him. He's a tremendous player. I had a chance to talk to him after the game. What a what a wonderful young man, and he's got a obviously a bright future in the league next year. Um, but I, I think it was a little bit of motivational thing for our for our players. Yeah, I was gonna say you kind of hinted to it there, but the game seemed to turn after that point. You think that did kind of fire up your players a little bit? Uh, how do I put this? We're uh, you know we don't we don't like to talk trash. Uh, we don't you know we just come and play hard. Um, but we're competitors, and I think our kids. Uh, I think they took it as. Um, well, you got, like I said, I, I think the play showed what they thought about it. You know what I mean? I think it definitely motivated our kids after that. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. We'll go next to Bill Wagner from Baltimore Sun Media Group. Hey, Ken. Is there any concern about letdown? I mean, I, I know that there is the home field advantage to play for, but the bottom line is you did just clinch – the West Division, that's a great accomplishment. There might be some, you know, sense of having, you know, accomplished what you needed to accomplish. Well, I think that's every week. I think every week in this profession, you just, you got to find a way to keep pressing forward. You got to find a way not to look to the next game. You got to find a way not to read your press clippings and, you know, people pat you on the back. And uh, it's just human nature. Complacency uh comes in a lot of different forms and shapes and sizes. Uh, it's subtle. Complacency is a very subtle thing. Sometimes it's hard to see see the signs of complacency. But you're definitely concerned. You're always concerned. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, um, and we, we if we do, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be, you know, sorely disappointed this week if we get complacent or um, have any kind of letdown because, SMU is a really good football team. I mean, they had a, you know, a really good chance to beat a team that just beat us. I mean, they beat us last week, you know, and so, uh, you know, they've played really good football teams. Not only the good teams in our conference, they've played, you know, Baylor and TCU. Um, this is a good football team, so we better be ready to go. Well, I was just going to follow that. that I imagine that Houston, I mean, uh, uh, SMU got your attention with the way they beat Houston, which you know is, very good. No, they had our attention way before. I mean, they just just the way they're playing, and like I said, why is they, you know, all of those games. But it's a culmination. It's not one game. You know, they've been playing well for a while. Uh, but we know what kind of players South Florida has, and you know that game was to the very end last week. You know, they had a great opportunity to beat South Florida. All right, thanks, Ken. Hi, right, Wags. The next question comes from Dan Tortora at wakeupcalldt.com. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Hey, Dan. How you doing? Doing well. To to look at this conference as a whole, you know, from the outside looking in, there's a lot of focus on the Power Five. From the inside looking out, this conference is sending more than half to bowl games and could send another one as it goes forward. So just what you can say about the level of competition that you feel as a coach inside this conference. Well, I think a lot of us coaches in our conference have said the same thing and we believe the same thing. And a lot of guys that have come from power conferences, you know, head coaches that have come from power five conferences and have come to the AEC have all mentioned that, you know, from top to bottom, we feel like our our conference is as good as any conference in the country, you know, from top to bottom. Very competitive, uh, really good football players, uh, really good coaches, good programs. So that we feel like this is a really super competitive league, and I think the play speaks for itself. And then as far as when it comes to rankings and, and some other things that come out, obviously your team is going to a bowl game no matter what. But when you look at certain rankings and when it comes to Tulsa, Temple, South Florida, Navy, Houston, so on and so forth, how do you handle that, and is is there any frustration with your players or, or with, you know, the team as a whole or your coaching staff to know that sometimes no matter what you do, if you're outside of the Power Five, 
it doesn't always get well represented as it should be. Well, I, I think, you know, there's validity in that question. I mean, there's there's always frustration. You fight for, you know, respect and, and when you play. and um, But like I said, we're not, as you mentioned, we're not the only team. You know, South Florida, Memphis, you know, uh, Temple, you know, there are a lot of teams that are doing good things and aren't getting the same notoriety. Obviously, you know, Houston's doing a lot of good things and uh, they, you know, were just on national television, so people saw them in the great game that they played against Louisville. Um, but it's something that you fight all the time, and you know, all you can do is try your best to win when you compete. Um, you know, but it, it is frustrating. 